Hey guys, we're on one of my favorite streets. A lot of different paths around here, but this one's smooth, it's quiet, and it's a beautiful neighborhood. Nice houses and plants everywhere. We're looking at a bike that I think fits really well in this neighborhood. This is the Evelo Aurora Limited. Very approachable, kind of a step through frame, but really beefy, pretty tough, and it's got these awesome 26 by 2.8 inch tires. That's a plus size tire. So 2.6, 2.8, or three plus size, right? So higher air volume, it makes the effective wheel diameter a little wider, gives you a lower attack angle. Air is squishy, so it gives you some comfort that way. And then stability, I really like that. Um, the fork is also a nice upgrade here. This is a 15 millimeter through axle. So it doesn't have a quick release. This is a six millimeter hex bolt right here, but, but through axles, they're just a little bit more stiff, makes it easier to align that disc brake if you're taking the wheel off and putting it back on. It's not gonna flex as easily. You're not gonna get that whooshing sound uh, from, from the disc brake rotor the same way you might on a more basic fork. Now, this thing isn't top of the line. It's still a spring fork. Um, like it's got kind of a hydraulic lockout system here, compression. It doesn't actually click, it's just sort of a, it's a slider. And then over here we have preload adjust. So you can preload that spring if you're someone who weighs a little bit more. This bike does support riders up to 350 pounds. And maybe that's, I should say the bike supports that much weight. I am only 135 pounds myself, but that's pretty impressive for a bike that is a wave, like deep step through frame. And they've really reinforced this. You can see a gusset right here, extra plating right there in the motor interface, another big gusset right there. And then that sort of, it's sort of an interesting mono tube seat stay back here. Normally there's a triangle. So there's like a tube here and a tube here that connects. This one kind of drops from above and it makes it easier to service the wheel in the rear because this is a belt drive. So let's check that out. Belt drives are known for being really quiet and kind of maintenance free. You know, you don't have a derailleur hanging down that can get it bumped out of place that you have to adjust a lot. This actually has a continuously variable transmission from Enviola with 380 degrees of gear ratio. It's equivalent to like 11 to 42 tooth uh, traditional cassette. So pretty neat, it's all right in there. And it makes shifting a little bit more intuitive. You don't have to press triggers and it, it's actually shifting electronically. So it doesn't go out of tune as easily. And for someone, maybe just with cold fingers or someone who doesn't isn't as familiar with shifting gears and stuff, this is a really cool setup in, in my opinion. But there are trade-offs and that is increased weight. And there's traction fluid inside that creates the connection between the bearings and the different rings that spin at different ratios. And it's not quite as efficient as a cassette uh, where you just shift and bang, 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 you go right through it. Th this ad just adds a little bit of friction, a little bit of kind of a delay, a tiny, tiny bit. It's not that noticeable. Uh, 22 tooth back here, 55 up there. This is a Gates carbon belt drive. So it has this center track. It's not gonna slip side to side uh, as easily or really at all. I haven't had any problem with these. Apparently they, they last longer than chains. Um, very durable. And because they have this unique like mono tube that I was talking about, they've got this horizontal sliding dropout. And if you loosen these nuts, it, it just drops down. The axle that goes through this hub, it just drops right down. And that makes it easier to service the rear wheel. Thicker 13 gauge spokes, 36 hole rims, 45 millimeter wide. They're, they're really doing this thing right. It's pretty beefy. And again, with that unique rear hanging mono arm that I keep talking about, it sort of resembles the main tube. They've combined the top tube and a down tube and it's just a nice step through approachable frame. Now in order to keep this frame sturdy and reduce frame flex and stuff, they've got this overbuilt rack and I think that's actually supporting just sort of the, the rigid feel of the bike. Look at all the, the tubes and stuff right here. It's, it's really overdone. But the rack isn't quite as functional as if it had like a little pannier hanger or the standard gauge tubing. This is pretty thick and it's sort of a rectangular bar. You're, you almost have to use one of those drape over um, saddlebag kind of things. And they do sell that on the website. I was talking to the folks at the company and they said, yeah, you know, these bikes are really strong. And rather than use a, a child seat, we recommend using a trailer. So you can actually take this off and there are keyed washers on both sides. You can take the one off on the left is what they said. You can put on a little quick release thing for a trailer and then pull your kids around or pets or whatever. I, I think that's pretty cool. And you know, this sliding horizontal sliding dropouts makes it really easy to change a flat if you do get a flat on the rear tire. 
once you have this thing set up with this, this spacing bolt right here and it's tightened down, you just unscrew this, drop it down after you've unplugged the cable on the other side. And it's really easy to get this off. These are custom uh, made Anova tires. This size is custom made for a Velo 26 by 2.8 with puncture protection on them. And the PSI rating is like 20 to 45. So it's actually pretty low pressure, which comes back to comfort. These aren't like way up at 60 or 80 or something where it's just like a rock. It's much, much more comfortable. And I love what they've done with the kickstand here too. You'll notice that it's very clear of the left crank arm. You're not gonna get pedal lock. It's not right there in the center of the bike. It's gonna support the rear rack if you've got that loaded up. It is adjustable length and I'm just using a rock here to, to, to boost the bike up a little bit more. Um, just well done. They, they customized this tab and made space for this. Now the other thing you'll see here are the hydraulic disc brakes. These are Tektro Ariga E-Comp. They're electric bike specific. 160 millimeters in the rear, 180 up front. So we've got a larger rotor. It's gonna help dissipate heat faster and give you a better mechanical advantage. It, I wouldn't mind having 180s on both, but maybe this was about getting overcrowded and needing to have that structural support on the rear rack. They do a lot, they, this is a custom frame. They do a lot of testing for strength so they can get that 350 pound max weight rating that we talked about. So still having hydraulic disc brakes, three finger levers, you get plenty of, of leverage with your hand. You've got adjustable reach right here with that set screw so you can bring them in or take them out depending on your hand size. And then having the hydraulic line as well as the motor inhibitor line that also activates a uh, bright mode on the rear light. That is cool. So it's interesting because the Galaxy 500, which I covered recently, that bike, it costs the same, $39.99. It has the electronic shifting just like this one, but it has a rear rear mounted battery, 36 volt, 13 amp hour. This one, this is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour. And they, they told me it's actually like 14.5, but still you're getting at least 672 watt hours, really good capacity, about 7.8 pounds on that battery pack. 70.2 pounds on the bike itself. So again, I'm really glad that the weight is mostly right there in the center. And I love the motor they've chosen. This is a Dapu mid-drive motor. It's rated at 750 watts nominal, peaks at 1,000 watts, 105 Newton meters of torque, and it's a multi-sensor. So this thing is measuring your pedal torque, and that's one of the primary signals actually, but it's also measuring rear wheel speed. See that sensor there? And, and then pedal cadence, and it combines those. So at lower speeds, if you're pedaling slow, it's really listening for how hard you're pushing. And if you push hard, it's gonna accelerate quickly. So it's very dynamic, I like that. Now this thing doesn't have shift detection, but it kind of doesn't need it because you've got that continuously variable transmission. Again, you don't have a derail, you're, you're not gonna bend the teeth on a cog or anything like that. It won't necessarily shift right away if it's under heavy load, but it just feels a little tougher in that sense. It, again, it doesn't need shift detection. If you ease off a little bit, then the motor's gonna ease back as well and that's going to make shifting happen really smoothly for me this motor is pretty capable it offers up to 110 rpm support so rotations per minute that means if you're spinning quickly and you're in a low gear the motor doesn't just fade out and hit like a top speed and then stop it, it keeps going up to a higher pedal rate which i really appreciate i'm someone who likes to shift to a lower gear and still want that support for the motor I mean, you got this powerful thing you got that nice 48 volt battery pack again compared to 36 volt on the rear rack i think this is a very like unisex capable frame and in fact the color is this like nice metallic dark silver and it's like bronze or gold really beautiful but when you look at this and then you look at the galaxy 500 which is smaller has like 24 inch wheels that frame is a little bit lower a little bit more approachable you know maybe even a little bit more space on the frame to step through because it has the rear rack battery this is perfect for me. I'm about 5'9", and I actually, you know, raise that seat a little bit higher so I get full leg extension. But with a throttle, this bike is, it's fun to just scoot around on. You don't really need to pedal. They just, it's kind of like, you know, turnkey. You get on this thing, it shifts gears for you. You just choose a pedal cadence. This belt's not gonna get rusty. It's not gonna make a lot of noise. Your pants are gonna be clean because it's got that nice clear chain cover. I'm wearing jeans and I don't need the rubber band around my ankle to keep them from touching and getting greasy and stuff. Nice pedals, aluminum alloy with a little bit of rubber grip. And then these awesome fenders. These are custom. I think they're like 80 millimeters wide and they're, they're kind of beveled so it's not gonna, it's just, just sturdier. And they've got this nice rubberized uh, mud, mud guard in the front so if you're pedaling and you, you kick that, it's not gonna damage the fender itself. Although again, these are very 
they're 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 not like super thick and sturdy in that sense but they they don't they're not going to crack like they're very durable in terms of flexing there might be a little bit of rattling but i haven't actually heard that much uh on my rides so i'm i'm impressed with that overall the bike is just it's fun to ride it's more of a casual kind of a, a lower cadence experience again good for neighborhoods with just a little bit of gravel maybe some trails and then having that through axle to me that's almost like overkill but hey i'll take it it's a pretty sturdy bike in in all of those different ways 27.2 millimeter seat post right here it's 350 millimeters long so you know again you can raise it pretty high i think this bike would accommodate many many body types and, and heights and stuff um yeah, and I, I think about like comfort a lot. So the suspension fork is really nice, about 100 millimeters of travel. And then with that seat post, you could swap it for a suspension seat post and get that like full suspension feel, especially with the bigger tires. Decent saddle, you know, it's, it's nice. I love that they squeeze bottle cage bosses right there on the seat tube. I took this all the way down earlier and there was still about two inches. So you might have to cut that seat post if you really want it to go all the way down to get that really, really low minimum saddle height, which I measured around, it's like 32, 33 inches. So yeah, you know, pretty good. And then look at this stem, like really nice, 45 degrees. This is like 110 millimeters, extra long, extra tall. And they got a bunch of spacers, a bunch of 10 millimeter, five millimeter, and then like 18 millimeter. So they're bringing this up as high as possible. And they've got this nice swept back, almost like a metropolis bar of, of years of, of go that I would see on other bikes. Nice ergonomic grips, got a locker on this one so it won't twist too much sort of comfortable rubber pattern on the bottom. They feel nice and they match really well. We got the grays and the blacks, everything blending together really nicely. So when I stand, my hands kind of, you know, they, they tip out a little bit like this. And when you bring them up, that's a really comfortable hand position. You're not like, you're not having to do this like on a mountain bike. They're just relaxed. You're not gonna get that like tingly feeling quite as much. The One of the, the challenges that I've had with this bike um, is is the battery a little bit so you can see that there's this key slot here on the right hand side you put the key in and unlock it and at first i was trying to pull this way and that's not how you do it you, you slide it out to the left so you have to kind of twist it and see how it's sprung you twist with one hand and then you pull with the other and since i'm holding the camera it makes it a little bit tricky but you can see it it kind of it popped open so yeah you know 7.8 pounds 48 volt 14 amp hour it's got a little USB port, which is nice. Five volts, one amp, I believe. It'd be nice if that USB was up here at the display, but you know, the, the Galaxy 500 with the rear rack battery, it, it doesn't even have a USB there. So this is a nice, a nice setup. It's got a little handle thing at the top, kind of resembles the Bosch battery pack. And they've got the uh, little charge level indicator built right in. It's pretty, it's pretty simple pretty simple for what it is but being able to take that off to reduce the weight of the bike for moving it transporting it is nice and then you know avoiding extreme heat is a good thing because the cells they won't last as long you know we won't get as many charge cycles if those cells are really hot extreme cold it's going to stunt your range temporarily so if it's an early morning and it's really cold and you left the battery out overnight you're only going to get half the range i'd estimate something like 30 to 60 miles with this depending on how much you use the throttle how full your tires are how heavy you are, all these different factors. And you can ride the bike without the battery if, if you want. I mean, this is, to me, it's pretty neat. This is Hydroform 6061 aluminum alloy. Being able to do that and have that just really sturdy section right there and still get such a high weight rating on that is pretty amazing to me. So anyway, the complaint I had about this isn't, isn't the capacity, it isn't the positioning, it's getting it back on. It's like, it's really kind of tough. I had to like slide it like this. And then maybe kind of turn that and then really have to push. I, I actually had to kind of kick it before. So I'm going to try to do that again. So I'm just there, there, not quite, didn't quite do it. Yeah, see, it didn't quite line up. It's got to be lower. There we go. So that was interesting. I got it over and then I pushed it down. Just make sure that is clicked in um, before you go for a ride because this is... This is one of the more expensive parts of the bike. It might be like an $800 or more replacement uh, if, if that goes tumbling out when you start to ride. And this is what the charger looks like. Weighs about 1.5 pounds and the output is 54.6 volts. It's a little bit beefier than the, the charger from 
the Galaxy 500. I'm not sure they're interchangeable, but it's still two amps. So it's not the fastest charger. It could take six or seven hours if you fully drain that battery, which isn't recommended. You wanna keep the battery between 20 and 80% capacity just to keep the cells from getting too stressed. And that's gonna help them last a little bit longer. But, it, but it's lightweight, it's small enough. You can put it in your backpack or maybe you get a trunk bag or one of the Avello saddle bags. And then you, you bring the, they have a little tool kit. They got the charger. Maybe you bring a helmet, some, some water down here. Bike has lots of options. Okay, so I brought you to the other side of the street because it's a little shadier and you might be able to see the display a little bit easier. I want you to know, Avello gave me this bike and they also gave us the, the Galaxy 500 for my girlfriend so we could ride together and stuff. Normally, I, I don't like to keep bikes kind of as gifts and stuff. Sometimes I'll take a service fee for my reviews just to keep the site going. In this case, I'm in Canada and they were like, it's easier if you just keep it. So I want you to know they gave me this bike. Try not to let that um, create a bias here with this review, but I want you to know. Um, so back to the, the bike. You know, we've got the battery here. We've got the, the power indicator. And then this is the button pad that, that launches the display. So we're gonna press the power button. Evelo, it's nice and branded, it's color. It boots up very quickly, which is nice. And you'll notice it's booted up our electronic shifting. So the blue is like an auto cadence kind of thing. You tell the bike, I want to pedal at this rate, this speed. And then the bike dynamically adjusts fast the bike is going so that your pedal rate can stay consistent. Now, if you're on flats, the bike might start going faster and you're still going at that, that whatever normal cadence speed. But if you hit a hill, now your cadence, you want to keep it the same, right? So now the bike has to slow down in order for that to, to work. So it's a really cool dynamic system. It's kind of hard to explain, but I equate like the pedal rate and kind of how hard you're working. So it's like, Avello, I just want to work kind of relaxed, right? I want to pedal sort of slow and relaxed. You take care of the rest. And it'll do that for you. That's really cool. So this is an innovation from Enviolo, NuVinci Optimize, back to this like N380, 380 degrees, continuously variable transmission. It's, it's equivalent to that 11 to 42 tooth cassette. That's a pretty great spread. It's a lot of really good options. And when you combine that with 110, RPM support. The drivetrain is great, but it is geared a little bit higher. I found myself wanting to create like a really fast cadence or a low gear in traditional terms. And, you know, the dynamic shifting thing is kind of cool, but I'm a more advanced rider. I want to choose my cadence. I'm the one who, you know, if we're going to a hill, I want to prepare for it and say, shift down, you know, give me the easier gears. And this does it dynamically, but I like to do it preemptively. So for people like me who want that more advanced uh, interface, you just press this little silver button and then it goes to this red. And you can see I'm in a high gear right now. This is like a steep hill and this is flats. So if you twist down, now it's, it's automatically shifting right now. And that is so cool. So it's electronically shifting. It's really durable. It's smart. You don't have this like physical cable going the whole way that requires the same tune-ups and inter interface adjustments that traditional gearing does. This is really neat, but it, it's expensive and it can be a little bit confusing at first. So orange is kind of the do-it-yourself mode. Blue is, we'll, we'll adjust it automatically. You keep your cadence. That's a little picture of like pedals going in a circle. So it's like pick the cadence you want or how hard you want to work and we'll, we'll do the rest. I'm going to take it back to orange and then back to the display here. So one of the really cool things is, in addition to being color, it's pretty large and it's kind of bright, but when you press the power button, you get dark mode. So it's not gonna blind you as much. And there's actually brightness adjustment in the settings that I'll show you later. So when you do that, of course, it also turns on the lights. We've got the Spinninga Linneo, two LED light back there. And there's the bright mode. I'm, I'm pulling the brakes, activating that motor inhibitor. Pretty cool. And then up front, we've got the Spinninga Kendo Plus. I think this is like 30 lumen. It is mounted to the suspension arch. So that means this is, it's unsprung. Like all this is sprung. It's nice and comfortable. Your wrists, everything is nice. But the light and the fender and everything, they're gonna be bouncing up and down when you go over rough terrain. So keep that in mind. I need to tighten this up because the light's actually getting a little bit loose right now. And that, it's just a matter of time. When you're riding all the time, you're going off road, kind of keep your eye on little things like that. To me, that's a bit of a trade off and the light could be brighter and bigger. It'd be nice if it was mounted up here, you know, but 
that still gets the job done and it points where you steer and it's not getting it's not colliding with these cables and I, I like the little cable ties they have these little it's not overdone like sometimes you get these uh neoprene wraps and stuff that just get really big and thick this is kind of busy and sort of messy but it's it's also kind of minimalist and it's easier to adjust and i, I like that now we come back to the display um there is another setting here which is if you hold the minus button it's kind of a hidden setting you get uh whoop get walk mode so we press the minus we hold it for a second and we get kind of that six six kilometers per hour walk mode which can be really nice if you have this loaded up with gear and you're in a precarious environment you don't want to pedal on it a lot of times i'll also just use the throttle which i bumped in my example so you can just press that as long as you're in any of the levels of assist you get full power on that throttle which is so nice i like that they don't limit you um based on the level of assist that you're that you're currently in so you have current speed right there uh odometer trip distance pedal assist level we go up to two three four five i think sometimes in menus they let you actually say like eco standard or power and and this one i haven't seen that as much so i'm kind of just ignoring that five levels of assist you don't get any throttle activation and and, and no pedal assist in zero so that's just going to be a bike with nice lights you know and a heavy bike with nice lights keep that in mind you have to be in level one at least but the bike does start in level one so that throttle is hot if you're if you accidentally bump it you know the bike could take off and maybe tip on you so please be careful with that keep keep your your eyes out um yeah i i was trying to figure out if there are anything else but i really think it's just walk mode and then lights by hitting the power button there in a way they've kind of limited your interaction with this display i mean you hold minus and it gives you walk mode you tap power and it changes the lights but since you've got odometer and trip readout right there there's nothing else to do you can really just focus on riding you don't have to worry about shifting and you've just got a throttle it's a very intuitive easy to use interface now when you're stopped and you're just maybe messing around with this and you want to make some adjustments you can do the settings menu to get there you hold set and these are some of the options you can clear your trip meter change your brightness we're at five right now because i want you to see it clearly speed limit 20 that's where you can take it all the way up to 25 and give yourself sort of an off-road mode or class three if you were to unplug or remove that throttle wheel size 26 units where miles per hour battery 48 volt want to leave that one and then down here it says advanced so we, we use minus to get there and we press set you can set a password which is pretty cool too and then exit and the password will just mean you know no one can tamper with your bike um, which could be nice if you're parking outside and, and for some reason you're not able to take the battery off or you just feel like it's too much of a hassle like we saw earlier it can be a little bit of a, a little bit of a handful okay guys let's take this thing for a ride stow the kickstand come up here to the display it's daytime so i'm going to turn off the lights you can see the display a little bit easier and i'm going to take it up to pedal assist level five we are on a bit of a hill and I'm kind of in the grass here. I, I don't want to hurt my knees trying to start from, from standstill. So what I can do is I can shift the gears and go to a high gear, an easy gear, because that's like way up the hill. It's steep, so I'm giving myself an easy gear. Or I can just use the throttle, right? So I'm, I'm going to do both. Like I'm making it easy for the motor, I'm using the throttle, and I'm going to ease into it. I just gently press that. There we go. Takes right off. And in this super like low gear, you get about 11, 12 miles per hour before the motor RPM runs out. Like that's the 110 RPM that the motor can support. That's what I was talking about. And that's why it's important to have motors that offer such high uh, cadence support. So now in order to go faster than that, I have to actively shift the gears. So I'm gonna do that over here. Whoop. Just kind of dial this back. So we're, we're not on the hill. It's more like in the middle of the hill. Now, pretty easy to get up to 12, 13, 14 miles per hour. Very stable because of those bigger high volume plus size tires. Very comfortable. I would raise the saddle a little bit more than this if I was actively riding. Very nice. We're way up high. We've got some nice views and stuff. Now we're going to turn and go up the hill here. 
same thing. I like to use the throttle to get started. This time the motor is not getting the same mechanical advantage, but it still does just fine. 105 newton meters of torque. Of course, if I help out, we accelerate even faster. And you do hear the motor, there's a little bit of a whine. That's just how it works with these, you know, geared motors. But it's not, it's not as loud as even some of the nicer motors. Like I've, there's the Bosch Performance Line CX and it offers up to 85 Newton meters of torque. And it's louder than this one. I think it also supports a little bit higher um, pedal cadence though too and it's shift detection and stuff. But since we have the belt drive and the planetary continuously variable transmission, we don't, we don't need that. Okay guys, from here you can see the 55 tooth belt ring. We got the Gates belt drive, carbon, really tough. It's, these guys make stuff for cars and stuff. So this is surprisingly durable over the years. It stays clean, it's quiet. Uh, we don't even need a slap guard because we got that mono tube. It doesn't have chain stays like a lot of other bikes. 22 tooth in the rear. Again, the spread on this new Vinci Optimize like N380 Harmony. Some of the branding is missing here, but the company sort of changed their branding in recent years. And 380 deg degrees of gear ratio is equivalent to 11 to 42 tooth cassette, as I mentioned before. So it's it's pretty great spread on this thing. Got the, the chain cover, 170 millimeter crank arms. I'm gonna ride this thing around. I'm gonna go off curbs and stuff. And my goal is to, to let you hear the motor, how quickly it responds and pedal assist, and also listen for rattling on this bike. Uh, this is stock. This has everything on it, the lights, the fenders and stuff. Um, you can get a sense for it. I do have the suspension like completely open, so I'm going to get some comfort for my hands when we do this. And we'll start with pedal assist, highest level five. Pretty awesome. Oh no, we got the camera flying out of the position here. Uh, really quiet. The only thing I heard was like the the kickstand going blah, 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 like when I went off a couple of those curbs. Let's try it again. This time I'm gonna use the throttle. Uh, you can see how powerful the motor is. And again, we're on a hilly section here. I know it's hard to tell from, from that view. Another thing I want to call out is just how well the brakes are working. Like you can hear it a little bit. I think I got some, got the, the rear rotor a little damp going off road. Um, they're great. They override the throttle and pedal assist. So it feels very safe. In some ways I'm like, where'd the motor go? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm pulling the brakes. Uh, so yeah, I feel, I feel like I'm in control. I feel safe on the bike, even though it does weigh a little bit more. And, and the motor, in some ways it feels tame considering how, how high it's rated. It is very capable. And again, when you're when you're using the throttle or pedal assist and it's in a high level, you really can't shift gears to, I mean, you can, but it's just not gonna do anything until the torque backs off and then it'll shift. Okay, my goal here is to demonstrate just what it sounds like and, and how effectively it shifts while under power. So I'm gonna be using a throttle, not pedaling, and I'm gonna shift gears. I'm on a bit of an incline, but it's fairly flat. So hopefully it shifts while we're while we're riding. Yeah, it did it. So I waited until we got up to speed a little bit so I wouldn't be, you know, really forcing that motor. And then I, I slowly shifted to higher gears and that increased the bike speed and, and I could hear the sound change. It was like, you know, and then we pretty much got up to the top speed. Not quite, maybe a little bit more time we would have, but yeah, it's interesting. It, it, it did pretty well. And now I'm gonna go the other direction and just like go from high to low.
that one it really likes to go that direction because it's getting easier for the motor and pretty much got all the way to the lowest gear and then we maxed out our pedal rpm again okay just for fun i'm going to go down this hill i'm in the highest gear i'm in the highest level of assist i'm going to try to max out the speed um and see how fast we can get going again it's limited at 20 miles per hour right now for legal reasons but i'm curious to see what this feels like at speed That was 25 miles per hour. And you're not getting any drag or anything from, from these systems here. You can definitely go faster than 20, but that's when the motor kind of cuts out. Well, that was pretty great you know for going through some gravel some wood chips and just sort of loamy soft wooded terrain it felt comfortable i didn't feel like i was on a city bike you know that can only drive on the streets and stuff it feels like this is really um, pretty comfortable in a lot of different environments and i, I like that One of the biggest things I notice about the, the drivetrain is that, yeah, I'm a little bit more used to controlling everything physically and being like, change the gear. I'm really not changing gears much at all on this bike. I'm really, I'm using the brakes more and I'm like spotting terrain. I feel less distracted in some ways. I'm, I, there's a, a little bit of a loss of control. Um, I can't just like, tch, do, tch, do, like a sports car. Um, but it changes the way that I'm, that I'm riding and, and gosh, the, the motor inhibitors cut out so quickly whenever I pull the brakes, almost sometimes too quickly. I'm like, oh, I cut the brakes again. Oh, I cut the, and I want the motor power. I'm climbing. So I'm, I'm sort of adjusting how I ride and this technical terrain here, where there's like rocks and little trees and stuff, and I'm kind of weaving in and out. Um, it's, it's good practice for me to sort of learn how to ride this bike effectively but that's not something that crosses my mind at all when I'm just on the street. I'm just like, go or stop. And then everything else just like falls into place. It's really at home in like the neighborhood environment, just riding around. There we go. Feeling pretty smooth, even over the bumpy sections. A little bit of water here and the fenders are helping me out. So it's a pretty capable bike. You kind of go anywhere with this thing and feel comfortable. Keep that upright body position that lets you talk to your friends or spot traffic. Yeah. A little bit of a delay with that start. Um, it is a torque sensor, so again, at slow speeds, it's really listening to how hard you press. I'm in five, and right now I'm just barely pressing, and it's, it's not overdoing it, but as soon as I really apply myself, the motor responds. So for, for me, that's cool. This is like an advanced, of like a multi-sensor hybrid sensor. A um, little, little fancier, a little bit more expensive, but better better experience overall. Guys, I think that's about it. That is the Evelo Aurora Limited. They've had um, kind of limited supplies on this thing, sort of selling out like a lot of bike companies recently. Evelo has been around like forever, since 2012 when I started doing reviews. And they offer that cool like buy it, try it for 20 days sort of a, a thing, which is nice if you don't live near a shop. Um, but you still wanna feel like you're getting an experience that you can go back on if it doesn't suit you. 
uh, four year warranty on this. They use the high quality cells and stuff. That's how they're able to do this. And they're one of the few companies making custom e-bikes like this. I, there, there really aren't too many companies and especially at a $4,000 price point, you can spend a lot more and get like a recent meal or something that's, you pick every little thing about it and they ship it from Germany and you know, but this is a pretty great experience. It's a little more turnkey and they said they're gonna have some more in stock in December, this is 2020. I hope this helps you guys out. There's a cool comparison tool back at the site. So if you're like, well, should I get the Aurora or should I get the Galaxy 500? I think in general, the Aurora is good for a larger person, a little bit taller, but if you're petite, but you like that mid mounted battery and that the extra power of this 750 nominal versus 500, there is nothing wrong with going with this bike. It's very capable. So you can use the comparison tool back at the site. There's forums. Please chime in with your thoughts and everything. Again, I do my best to be unbiased and give you all the feedback I can because I love you guys. I want to help. We'll see you in the next review. Ride safe.